the scriptures uh, through Bible college. We have some certificates to hand out tonight, and, and I get to um, hand out a, a certificate to my son Daniel. He got his doctorate in theology. Hallelujah. <clears throat> so I get to bless them with that. that that's how, it's always a great accomplishment when you, when you do things like that. It's not, e it's not an easy goal. As those of you going to Bible school notice, it, it's not easy, especially when they tell you you've got to write these papers. <laughs> These papers kind of, kind of, kind of uh, are, are not that easy to do, especially when you get up to do like the last one. Uh, Pastor Daniel had to do was 150 pages long. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot of, a lot of writing. Amen. Hallelujah. So we'll be doing that uh, <clears throat> toward the end of the service tonight. But <clears throat> excuse me, I do want to share a word with you tonight because I'm a preacher, so I better do what I'm called to do. Amen. I'm called to preach, so I better preach. Hallelujah. If you're going to turn your Bibles, to, I'm going to start out in Hebrews chapter 4. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you that your word is alive, and it is here with us. I thank you, Father, for the power of your word, that your word is life-changing. And so tonight, as I deliver the word, I thank you that your people here have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to them. I ask you, Lord, to anoint me to preach and teach tonight. Let it not be <clears throat> of the man, uh, Pastor Tom, but let it come from my spirit, from the heart, anointed by the Holy Spirit. I thank you for all this now in Jesus' name. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 12, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of your heart. I want to, I want to share tonight with you something about the Word, because I, <clears throat> I know when people are going to Bible school, they're studying the Word. They're getting the Word in. The Bible tells us that we are to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So knowledge is powerful. Well, one thing we do with knowledge, the Bible tells us, the Word and the Spirit, they are one. <clears throat> if you just have knowledge, you're, you're going to be kind of like hobbling along on one leg. You've got to have the Spirit, too. You've got to have the revelation of the Word of God. So tonight I want to share with you about one word from God. Because if you can have one word from God, and it'll change your whole life. I remember Brent, Brother Kenneth Copeland <clears throat> said this one time at one of his services. I don't know if it was... <clears throat> if it was um, his message or if it was something that God told him to say but he said this this phrase he said one word from God can change your life and that's it that's the truth one word from God can change your life so it says here the word is powerful and it's sharper than two edged two edged sword one word one word the word is powerful and, it, and notice what it says there it's sharper than any two edged sword it can divide between the spirit and the soul because your spirit and soul are very close together. As a matter of fact, most people have problems discerning between what is spirit and what is soul. Most people go around and they say, oh, I don't know as, uh, if the Lord told me this. I don't know. Is this my own spirit talking? Are these my own thoughts? Is this, is this the Lord? So people have a lot of trouble discerning uh, what is God and what is their own heart because the spirit and the soul are so closely connected. There is one thing, according to the word of God, that can cut between, that can, that can tell you, is it of God or is this my own thinking? Is this something I desire or is it my own thinking? You know, a lot of people desire things and because they desire them so much, they say, the Lord told me I can have this. The Lord told me to go here. The Lord told me to do it. And it isn't the Lord at all. It's their own desire. The only thing that can tell you, is it the Lord or is it, or is it from the Spirit, is the Word of God. So the Word of God is so important. And what I'm going to talk to you tonight is about that Word that divides between the Spirit and the soul. you got to have what we call revelation knowledge. Amen. Revelation knowledge is, is a key. And I'm telling you, there are not very many places that you'll listen to the Word of God that you'll hear stuff like this preach because you, know, you almost have to be, well, I really think you have to be a Spirit-filled Christian to get in from the Spirit because a lot of the things you get from the Spirit, you have to pray them out in tongues. 
You have to pray in the Holy Ghost before you realize, before you get the revelation that you're looking for. So one servant, one servant, one word, one scripture can change your life forever. Back in 1995, you know, I, I, I shared this with, with the people here and everywhere I go. Back in 1995, I was, not, I was not considering to be a pastor. I wasn't thinking about being a pastor. It was nothing in my mind about being a pastor. And I was riding down, just driving down the road one day, and, and just an audible voice. It was just an audible voice. And you know, that's not normal. God doesn't usually speak audible. But he, he spoke to me this time. It was so clear. He said, Tom, I want you to be a pastor for me. I heard it just like a person was standing next to me and said it. And it shocked me. It really shocked me because I didn't, I wasn't thinking on that line. I mean, I, but one of the things I, one thing I did do, I studied a lot. I studied a lot. I did, I did correspondent Bible courses. I did my own Bible courses. I studied the Bible morning, noon, and night. I prayed in tongues all the time. I was in the spirit when I got that word from God. Then I asked God, well, what do you want me to do? And then he gave me a word out of 2 Timothy 4.2. He said, preach the word. That, this is my instructions that's been carrying me now for 20 some years, 22 years, 23 years now as preaching as a pastor. This is something that has carried me to do what I do now is that one word I got back in 1995. Anytime I ask God, what should I do? <laughs> he don't change. He just tells me, I told you, preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. So you notice whenever I come, whenever, you know, when I was here uh, pretty much uh, full time, I was running the church here back, back uh, six, seven, eight years ago, whenever it was I first came here, I did nothing but preach the word. I don't like to tell you stories, bedtime tales. Now I lay me down to sleep. I don't, I don't talk like that. I talk the word. Amen? Because God told me to speak the word. I don't speak my opinions. I don't speak other people's opinions. I speak the word because that's my calling. That's what changed my life is that word from God. <clears throat> so you all have a word from God. You all had a word from God. <clears throat> if if uh, maybe not in a direction like I said I did, but you had a word from God when God spoke to you and said, I want you to be one of my children. I want you to, and you, and you were convicted in your heart and you spoke with your mouth and you said, Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. You got a word from God and that word was birthed you into the kingdom of God. The Bible tells us that in 1 Peter chapter 1 that we were born again by the word of God. By the incorruptible seed of the word of God. So that one word, Jesus Maybe a little, you know, scripture, you must be born again. But that scripture resonated in your heart. It resonated in your soul until one day you, you accepted it. You accepted Jesus. And let me ask you this. Did that one word change your life? Did your, did your confession of Jesus change your life? If it didn't change your life, then maybe you need to make a new confession. Because I tell you what, my, my, when, I was, when I was searching for Jesus, I was marching this way. And when I made Jesus the Lord of my life, I just went turn around and went just the opposite way. I wasn't about to go the same way I was going anymore. And ever since that day, I've been, <clears throat> I've been looking at following Jesus. Jesus doesn't follow the way of the world. Jesus said, if you love the world, you have no part in me. We don't, we don't love the world, we love the word of God. Amen. The Word of God is our direction. So, whatever your need is, whatever your desire is, whatever your vision is, to, to bring this to, uh, to pass, to fruition, you need a word from God. If you don't have a word from God, you're going to try to do it on your own. And what happens when you do it on your own? <laughs> you plunk, yeah? And you get very frustrated. You get very frustrated. See, you can have a word from God on whatever it is you're going to or through, and it doesn't matter what's going on around you. You can have the peace of God that passes all understanding. I mean, I've had times in ministry, I'm telling you, ministry to the, <laughs> to the natural person is not fun. 
I mean, it, I mean, well, we enjoy people, but there is so much that comes out at a pastor and at a church. I mean, you guys know that in your life. When you stand up for what you believe, you stand up for the gospel. A lot of the people don't like it. The devil don't like it. Amen? The devil don't like it. He stirs things up. But if you got a word from God, I don't care what the devil brings. You know, I, I've been challenged so much in ministry. You know, I've, I've been a Christian for 36 years. I've been preaching full time for 22, but I've really been in a ministry about 30 years. I, I was, I was um, associate pastor with, under my pastor uh, in the church in Ironwood for years. But <clears throat> what kept me, go, what keeps me going all the time, no matter what goes on, is because I know I'm in the will of God. And, and some people think, well, you know, these things shouldn't happen. Well, wait a minute. Look at Jesus. Jesus is who he followed. Did things happen to him? I mean, they got right down to the point where they said, crucify him. Crucify him. But Jesus had a word from God. Jesus knew where he was going. When we know where we're going, it doesn't matter what's going on. You know, the greatest, the greatest picture in the Bible that I see on this is when Jesus told his disciples, let's go over to the other side. I mean, you, you all heard that story before. They got into the boat. They start rowing out in the boat. And what did Jesus do? Jesus said, I got it. Here's the word. We're going to the other side. So what did he do? He went in the boat, got his pillow and his blankie, and lay down and went to sleep. The storm came. The storm was roaring. Waves are coming over the boat. Now these guys, these fishermen, the disciples, knew very much uh, about the waves. They knew of the sea, and it must have been really bad for them to panic. I mean, they did this every day. So it must have been one heck of a storm. But they, they were panicking. They thought, we're gonna, Jesus, don't you care? That's like slapping the face to Jesus, right? Don't you care? I mean, he, he, he took them through all kinds of things. And Jesus said, yeah, you know, I could just hear him say, yeah, I care, but chill out, you know. Just a little wind, you know, just a little water, what you're so scared about. He says, why are you afraid? Didn't you hear my word? See, they didn't have ears to hear. They weren't listening. Jesus said, we're going over the other side. So right in the midst of the worst storm of the season, Jesus was sleeping. See, that's how you and I should go through storms of life. See, don't <laughs> go to sleep. <laughs> don't panic. Chill out. You know, when something bad happens, go, <gasps> don't go, don't do that. Stop. Take a step back. Where's this coming from? Is it stealing, killing, destroying? And <laughs> I know it's my enemy. And greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I am an overcomer. Start proclaiming who you are. Start saying who you are. And you watch all of a sudden the storm begins to go down, go down, go down. So one word from God. You need a word from God to, to fulfill your calling in life. You need a word from God to fulfill that desire in your life. You have to seek after it. He said, if you, if you seek me with all of your heart, you're going to find me. See, a lot of times that, that, that doesn't happen with people. They seek God a little bit, and they do this, what we call hoping and a praying. Well, I sure hope this works. Chances are it won't, because faith is the subject of things hoped for. You've got to have faith. I listened to a preacher on the radio the other day. He was talking about, he was given a message on divine healing. But he said in his message, a very well-known preacher he said in his message, but God does not want to heal everybody. I said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. If God doesn't want to heal anybody, so how would you know if God wanted to heal you? You don't, and if you don't, where, how, what do you have to put your faith in? And everything we get from God is by faith. So if we can't believe God wants to heal us, how would we ever believe? That's, that's the wishing and the hoping thing. We don't want to wish and hope. We want to confess with our, with our mouth and believe in our heart. Amen? That's faith. We believe God for that. 
Uh, remember the story in the Bible about the centurion who who's, um, had a, a servant who was sick. And he came to Jesus and he asked Jesus, will you come and heal my, my servant? Jesus said, yeah, I will. Well, that, right away, there you go. That shows Jesus will do it. He wants to do it. He is the healer. But the guy said, wait a minute, you know, Jesus, you don't have to come all the way across town to my house. Just speak the word and my servant will be healed. This guy had a revelation of the power of, the, of Jesus' word. Jesus' word and this word are the same. This is the same. When you're reading this book, it's like reading the lips of Jesus. Remember one of our presidents, George H.W. Bush, made a statement one time, read my lips. It, didn't, it wasn't good, but Jesus says, read my lips. <laughs> you want it to happen? Read my lips. Because this is, this is Jesus talking to us. The Bible is Jesus talking to us. And so when, when Jesus spoke that word, immediately that servant was healed. It was the power of the word. And that's what you need. That's what I need in our life. You have a desire. You have a want. You have something in your life. You have to get a word from God on it. You have to get something to ignite. One word from God can heal you. One word from God. I, I don't know if I'm sure I gave you this testimony up here about, I don't know, maybe seven, eight years ago, I hurt my shoulder. And I went and I actually, it hurt. I know I, 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 know I pray and I put up with it and I confess the word of God over it. And it, it went on and on and on for a long time. And I went to see a, a, a bone guy, what are they call? Orthopedic? Orthodontist? No. <laughs> <laughs> orthopedic surgeon and he said well we're gonna have to cut you open and do all this stuff I know and it's okay I'll, I'll believe God so I just I was believing God and I every day I mean sometimes it would hurt really bad but but I just kept I'll praise the Lord God God will heal me God's healing me I believe I'm healed one day I was walking across my living room I picked up the remote from the from the side from I was sitting by the couch. My TV was across the room, and I was gonna I was gonna turn on uh, something on TV, and I turned it on, and I had it. It was on uh, Trinity Broadcasting, and Gloria Copeland was preaching healing school, and she was preaching healing school, and she was praying for people, and I I kind of walked and stopped for just a second to see what she was saying because I was actually heading in the bedroom and pick something up but I just stopped and, and in the midst of it she turned to the side and, and called this young man his name is Tracy Harris I know, I know the man and uh, uh, he said Tracy come out here and help me pray and Tracy walked out and I stopped and I was watching it and Tracy walks out and he, he takes about three steps off the stage and he looks and he says there's somebody out there that has a problem in his in his left shoulder lift your hand up I lifted my hand up now I could not lift my arm any higher than this for for at least two years and he said lift your hand up and I went run bang one word from God I'm telling that's been like five years ago I can lift it way over here now. I mean, totally, yeah, there you go. <laughs> totally heal one word. So, you know, you got to keep your faith ignited because you never know when that word could come. But one thing you got to do, you got to put yourself in a position to hear that word. And the place you usually hear the word is in church, when you're reading the Bible when you're listening to a CD or some preacher, you're not going to get it watching, you know, a lot of shows on TV. I'm not against TV, but, but if you want to spend, you know, hours and hours watching TV and not, nothing watching uh, the Word of God or hearing the Word of God, you might miss it. We don't want you to miss it. One word can change your life. But you know, the word that you get, you have to get your word. See, God is, God is, God's an individual God. He deals with us all differently. Uh, years ago, I heard a story of Oral Roberts. Oral Roberts was seeking out for wisdom. He was, had his big tent and, and uh, this big healing ministry. 
And he wanted a deeper understanding of, of the ministry and a deeper understanding of healing. And so the Holy Spirit spoke to him and he said, Oral, if you will read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and the book of Acts on your knees for 30 days, I will give you a deeper revelation. So Oral said, praise the Lord. He, every day he got down on his knees. He read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and the book of Acts. And when he got done, God began to open up his ministry, his healing ministry exploded. And so I heard Gloria Copeland telling this story. And Gloria Copeland said, I heard Oral say this. And it, it just struck in my heart that I, that I should do the same thing. So she said, for 30 days, I got down on my knees. I read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And she said, after 30 days, I had the huge revelation of the healing ministry, healing services that God used, that God had her in. She's been doing this for, for many, many years. So I heard, I heard her tell that testimony. I said, huh, well, I'm going to do it too. So I got down on my knees every day and I read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the book of Acts for 30 days. When I got up on, on the end of 30 days, my revelation was I had sore knees. <laughs> it wasn't my word. It was their word. It wasn't my word. So just because a preacher says something doesn't mean it's going to happen to you. I mean, sometimes when, when preachers say, some, say things, you know, when you're sitting out there and these things that we say, something just sparks you. There's your word. Take that word and run with it. Begin to study along that line. And these are the things that are going to bring you into, your, into the revelation of whatever it is that uh, you're seeking from God. You can't get things on somebody else's revelation. Remember the seven sons of Sceva in the book of Acts? They heard, of, they, they, seen, they heard about Jesus casting out demons. They, they watched Paul cast out demons. So they said, hey, we're going to do this too. This looks like fun. So they went up and got a demon-possessed guy, and they began to cast the devils out of him. And the devil looked at him and said, hey, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who the heck are you, buddy? And the Bible says the man whom the demons was in jumped on them and he, he tore them all apart. Sent them out and screaming out of the room. Ripped their clothes off. They were naked. See, you can't, you, can't go, you can't go on somebody else's revelation. When you know that you know that you know that you got power over the devil, you can cast any devil out. When you know it, when you got a word from God that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world, you can cast out any devil. The devil doesn't have a chance because you got the Holy Spirit in you, right? Amen. Listen, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. <clears throat> it says in verse number 9, I is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of the man the things which have been prepared for those who love him. I has not seen. With your physical eyes, you do not see your answer. With your physical ears, you do not hear the answer. It says, your eyes have not seen, your ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart, heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. But the next, I love the next word, but. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. That's that revelation knowledge. That's that word from God. That's, that's that one scripture that can change your life. Just like God changed my life with the scripture, preach the word. I've been sailing on preach the word for 22 years. I, be, I believe that word of God. The, for, it says, for the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. You notice what it searches? The deep things of God. You'll only get this stuff by revelation knowledge. The only way you're going to get revelation knowledge is to be in the word of God and in prayer and fellowship with God. This is where it comes from. It comes through prayer. It comes through fasting. It comes through meditating. It comes through praying in the spirit. Then all of a sudden, bam, that word will come and you go, I got it. Remember Jack Cole when he was up here, he was talking about, about how his, uh, his dad got born again. His dad got born again and he didn't know, didn't know what was going on, but he, but he got it. 
And he went home and he told, he told his parents they thought he was drunk. He said, no, I got it. I got it. Hot dog, I got it. He got it. So when you know you, when you, know you get it, hot dog, you know you're going to get it. Amen? When the revelation comes, it doesn't matter then what happens. When you have a revelation that by his stripes you are healed, you will never worry about sickness again. I have walked in divine health for 35 years because I believe that by his stripes I'm healed. I have no doubt I'm healed. I, it's a word from God. I have a word from God. And I, and I walk this out, praise God, as long as I believe it, I'll walk it out for the rest of my life. So the, the revealed word of God will, will open up. It will take back the veil of flesh. See, this is the thing that holds us back, this flesh. Well, I don't feel like it, Pastor. Well, it doesn't sound right to me, Pastor. Well, it doesn't look like it to me. See, if, you're, if that's all you are is touchy-feely, see, you won't receive things from God. You know, you'll be like doubting Thomas. I got to see it and then I'll believe it. Jesus said, no, no, no. It don't work that way. You got to believe it and then you'll see it. You have, to, you have to have more faith in the word of God than you have in anything in the world. More faith. It's not about seeing it, not about hearing it. It's knowing it in your heart. When that word hits your heart, there is an explosion of faith. And faith is what brings to us all the promises of God are received by faith. So that we have, to re we have to remove that veil of flesh. The Bible even tells us when we turn to Christ, the veil is removed. So God opens our eyes to see. It's just like a lot of times, though, Christians, it just seems like, well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to see this. Because <laughs> God might tell me to go to Africa. Denise says, yay! <laughs> that was a good place to go, amen? Hallelujah. God wants, God wants you to do something. Whatever God wants you to do, it's going to be the best thing for you, amen? I didn't especially want to be a pastor, but I do not regret one day of my 22 years as, minister, as a minister. I, would, I wouldn't change it for anything. So <clears throat> when, when your heart seeks God, when you see God with all of your heart, you're, you're ready for revelation knowledge. You're ready to have something shown to you. You're ready for God to, to, see, to show you things. You know, in my life, years ago, many, many years ago, I can, I can remember it just like it was yesterday. I was standing in the living room of my house in Bessemer, Michigan, and it was in the evening, and I looked out of, out of the window up into the sky, and I'd seen the stars and, and the sky up there, and I just said, there's got to be more to life than this. There's got to be more to life than this. And so I began seeking God, and then God revealed to me Jesus, the Savior. And I got born again because I was seeking God. And then a little while longer, as I began to read the Bible, and I began to see what Jesus did, and he said, the works that I do, you shall do also. And then I read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, all the gifts of the Spirit. I said, Lord, I need this power. Where, where do you get this power from? And I began to seek the power. And then somebody told me you, I, about the scripture in the book of Acts that says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So I began to seek the Holy Spirit. And then I got a revelation of that, 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 that I must uh, receive the Holy Spirit. And when I did, and he came into my life, and I began to speak in other tongues, and I, all of a sudden my eyes were opened up to the scripture, I began to understand them. See, I was seeking God, and God gave me a word. And like I said, back in 1983, I was seeking God about healing, and God told me, by my stripes, you were healed. And I believed that, and that word exploded inside of me, and I was healed, and I am healed. Amen? It's like, it, this is how it works. You seek God for whatever it is you need in your, in your life. You seek God. You're not going to get it just sitting on your blessed assurance. Amen? You're going to get it when you're out seeking God. Remember I said, whatever you put your hands to will prosper. God does not prosper laziness. God does not prosper lazy people. 
God calls lazy people foolish. Don't be a fool. Amen. Seek after God. Seek him. So, so I, I was uh, healed when I, when I sought him about divine healing. But a lot of people will say, Pastor, I never get a word of God from God. God doesn't speak to me. Well, let, let me show you something. Look over in Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4 and verse number 33. It says, that, this is after Jesus has taught them a bunch of parables. These were things that were hard to understand except unless you were spiritually in tune. Verse 33 says, And with many such parables he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. And without a parable he did not speak to them. And when they were alone, he explained all things to his disciples. He explained all things to his disciples. Well, what is a disciple? A disciple, the word disciple is, 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 comes from the word discipline. He, he explained all things to those who were disciplined. He didn't say, I will show them to the believer. He didn't say, I'll show them to a Christian. He said, I'll show them to a disciple. A disciple of Jesus is a follower of Jesus. We're seeking after Jesus. We're seeking him with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our strength, and all of our mind. We're going after it. See, if you want something, you've got to go after it. It doesn't drop out of heaven. And, you know, many people give up on God because they just think God's going to, you know, you're going to say a little prayer, and all of a sudden, bang, there it is. It don't work that way. I mean, God does miracles, I agree, but that's not the norm. The normal is you walk out your life. God showed me a little picture of this one time year, many years ago, that our life, that, that our path has been laid out from God from, from the day that we were conceived. He, ha, he has a path for us to walk on. And because he has a path, he has a, he has a calling for everyone. Each one has a calling from God, and God has a path for us. He lays that path out, and on that path, in every hour of our life, every week of our life, every month of our life, he has the provision that you need laying on that path. And as you walk out that life, you're following God. You will have your needs met because the Bible says, my God shall supply how many? All of our needs. So how could we ever go to God and say, God, I need this. See, if you're praying for your needs, you're, you're praying wrong. God already said, I'll supply them, right? You pray for your wants. Pray for your desires. Pray for things, Tom, exceedingly above all we can ask or think. But go wild with your dreams. That's what we pray for, not our needs. God knows you need food. God knows you need clothes. God knows you need heat in your house. We spend too much time begging God for for these needs where he said, I already, I already provided them. So I would rather, I would think this way. If our needs aren't being met, whoa, oh, maybe I veered off the path. Maybe I'm on somebody's other path, somebody else's path. I want to get back on my path because on my path, all of my needs are met. Amen? That makes sense? Amen. If you stay on, a, if you stay on your path, all of your needs are met in life. But you have to be a disciple, disciplined in life, disciplined in the word, disciplined in prayer, disciplined in your giving, disciplined in your church attendance, Dis just disciplined in the Christian things that we know to do. You stay on them. You will never have a need in your life. You will never have a need in your life. I could just hear brains going, what do you mean? Well, think about it now. Here's a revelation. Get this revelation, my God shall, is it shall positive? Shall supply all of my needs. As long as I'm on his path. Now if I veer off here and start doing my own thing, well my needs are over here, then I'm going to have to fight for my needs. So get on God's path and all of your needs are there. You just got to believe it and it, it will be so. 
Believe in it and it will be so. Look at, look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8. <clears throat> Verse number 30. He says, and he spoke these words, many believed in him. Then Jesus said to the Jews who believed, if you abide in me, if you abide in me, that, that word is very powerful, abide in me, that means you live in Jesus. It's in him we live and move and have our being. We live in Jesus. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, you are my disciples indeed. So, in other words, if you're not abiding in Jesus, if his word is not alive in you, you're not a disciple. You're not a disciple. You may be a Christian. You may be a follower. You may be a believer. But there's not that many disciples Disciples are disciplined believers. Amen? People who are disciplined in their life. He said, After, if, if this is what you are, then you will know the truth. Or in other words, let me put it this way. Then you're going to get your word from God. Then you're going to get your word from God. And that word from God is going to set you free. Hey, buddy out there, lift up that arm. Hallelujah. I got my word. Amen. Hey, buddy out there in that field, sicker than a dog, receive my word. Ugh. 34 years, haven't had the stomach flu. Glory. I can't even remember what it's like. Oh, yes, I can. Yeah, I can, even re I can, I can still remember it because when I did have it, it was no fun. But it's fun being healed. Amen. You will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. The, wait a minute. The truth, nothing you do. The truth makes you. If the truth makes you free, is there any struggle? Uh, no, Lord, God. No, the truth makes you free. Makes you free. Daniel used to like the one I used to talk about, the fruit of the Spirit. Poop! Fruit just happens. When you're a disciple, the fruit of the Spirit just happens. When you're a disciple, your needs just happen. The truth will make you free. When you get a word from God on whatever it is you're believing for, whatever your, your desire is. Now, I just feel impressed to say this tonight. Quit play, praying for your needs. Thank God He meets your needs. Amen? Change your prayer to God, I need this, God, I need... No, no. Thank God you supply my needs. Thank God my needs are met in Christ Jesus. Now start believing God for things beyond your needs. Believe God for things beyond your needs. He says, then you'll know the truth, and the truth, or the word you get from God, the word that you need, will bring freedom into your life to whatever area it is. One word from God can change your life. That's why, that's why the, this Bible school, doing, doing Bible studies and that studying the word of God is so important. Because you're putting that word in you. And the more you put in you, the more, the more real it becomes, the easier it becomes to hear it when that word pops. When God speaks that word to you and says, all right, here it is. Here's your scripture. Here's the word for you today. So <clears throat> one word from God will change your life. You got you to stay in the word of God. Even after you guys, when you guys are done with Bible school, that doesn't mean you can close your book and say, well, my studying's over. I truly believe that we'll study this book all through eternity. Remember I said this many times, the old rabbi said that there's 70 layers to this book. And when we read it, most of the time, we might get past layer, layer one or two when we see it. Remember I said years ago, I preached a sermon on Matthew 6.33. God gave me a sermon on Matthew 6.33 that, uh, that, uh, <clears throat> that one Wednesday. And, you know, seek, seek after God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. And I asked him next week, what do you want me to preach on? He said, preach on Matthew 6.33. 
And I asked him next week, what do you want me to preach on? He said, preach on Matthew 6.33. 52 weeks I preached on Matthew 6.33. So I, maybe I got to level 52, but I still got 18 more to get up to 70. And I don't really believe I scratched the surface of it after 52 weeks. I don't, how can you get 52 sermons out of one scripture? I don't know, but God showed me that. I did it. Because I, I got them. I got them all on CD. I got them all, all in, you know, at the church office in Ireland. 52 weeks of one, of one scripture. One inspired word is worth a million others. One inspired word. That, that's why it's so important to do these kind of things. Put the CD on. If you're if in the morning, if you're, you know, a lot of people just like noise, okay? So people turn on a TV. Well, put a preacher on. Put the, put the Bible on tape. Just do so, hear the, the word of God because it's the word that'll set you free. It's not all this other stuff. If I, I'm all fine with listening to music and I'm all fine. I mean, worship is wonderful. <clears throat> but even to listen to music for pleasure, that's fine. But that does not mean that this is, this is how you live. We as believers live in this book. We li live in the word of God. One inspired word is worth a million others. Amen? So I hope I inspired you tonight to seek God for that word. Pray, ask God for, that, for that, that desire of your heart. What is your desire? See, if the Bible says God will give you the desires of your heart, then start, quit praying for your need. You're spending too much time on your needs. Let's head out into them desires. Let's get, let's, let's get out there where deep calls unto deep. Let's get out there where the impossible is. Amen? I mean, I mean my, what, what I did in ministry, and believe me, this has nothing to do with, this is, I'm just a person. It's God, it's the Holy Ghost. But for take, for take one country bumpkin born in Calumet, Michigan. And that's a country bumpkin. Yeah, that's a country bumpkin, all right. <laughs> you know, what does that sign say? End of the earth. You can see it from <laughs> I mean, that, but, but God took me, and, and I believe me, if the Apostle Paul said I was chief of all sinners, I was right behind him. But God changed me. And through what, I, what, what happened to me, and, and like I said, I'm not tooting my horn. It's not about me, believe me. But all, after that, look, at, you got these two preachers here are going to change cities. We have already changed a nation. You, uh, uh, these girls who went with us to Uganda saw what we did over there. That all came out of these little churches. They was just birthed by, it was a word from God that did it. I could have never believed this stuff if any, somebody told me this years ago. I, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Running around with shirts that say ironwood on them. Wow, that's, that's, that's just, <laughs> it's, it's hard to grasp even. It's hard to grasp. But that was a word from God. To, to God, God gives you a word, you can do anything. Don't limit yourself. Remember that scripture in the Old Testament, it says they, they, you know, they, didn't, they didn't get what they, what they wanted because they limited the Holy One of Israel. Don't limit God. So begin stretching out. Reach for things beyond what's... See, if you can attain it on your own strength, then that's no big deal. If you got to go out farther where you can... There's no way I could ever do this. That's where the fun begins. That's where the excitement is. Start praying for them desires. Start praying. Start letting God know them. And, and begin thanking God that your need is already met. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for your word tonight. I thank you that your word is, as we read in Hebrews chapter 4, your word is alive. And I pray tonight that your people it, it will get a word from God. Father, if they have not heard a word tonight, Father, that, that they will get their own from you. Father, they'll hear the word of God. But I pray through what, what you had me minister tonight, this living word of God will change their lives that even tonight would be a, a, a memorial in their life,
that going beyond tonight, they'll begin to seek after things that they thought were never possible. Because we know the Bible says with God, all things are possible. So Father, I bless them tonight. I bless them in their minds and their bodies. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And you say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Right, hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank God for everything. All my needs are met. My desires are all coming now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.